everyone good afternoon it's Alyssa from my kitchen <laughs> um, as usual I am very hungry so it's definitely time for lunch I am uh, excited I have I'm just gonna rearrange a little bit okay um I have a new cookbook well new to me I think this came out last year uh, this came out in 2019 sometime it's called the De the defined dish. It is a um, healthy eating cookbook, like exactly my style. Um, let's see if I can get you back to the beginning. Um, so this is called the defined dish: healthy and wholesome weeknight recipes by Alex Snodgrass, and it is my favorite. Whole thirty endorsed. I'll show you the cover. I cannot move the camera because we are precarious as usual. There it is. It's the defined dish. Um, because I'm using my laptop, I know this is normally where I put my tripod, so everything's a little different this week. Um, filming from home never gets any easier. Uh, but the recipes in it are pretty cool. I found a lot of things that I really liked. Uh, we'll go over that while the food is cooking a little bit. But for today, uh, let's get to the recipe that I'm making today. Uh, the weeknight lamb bolognese. Um... And so this is like, uh, this is a recipe from her family or inspired by her mom's sauce, but because this is a weeknight version, it's supposed to be healthy but easy, we are using um, whatever your favorite jarred pasta sauce is. Um, so I have one that is sugar free, no soy, nothing, no additives. Um, because it's supposed to, this book's supposed to show you how like you can make really, really good food and really, really healthy food, but there are some shortcuts that you can take and ways to make those shortcuts taste and taste better and work for you, which I really like that. Um, so let's see what we need to do to get started. Um, cook the pancetta. So I don't have pancetta, but I tend to keep some prosciutto in my house, and I was not going to go out and look for pancetta. Um, not that it's hard to find, obviously, but I was like staying in the house. Um, so I'm gonna cook up some prosciutto and just watch it because it does crisp up and burn a little differ different than pancetta, but it's got a, it's similar flavor. It's just different like fat and texture. Um, so I'm gonna chop up some prosciutto and do that. Um, and then we're gonna add carrots, onion, garlic, and red pepper flakes. So I don't have carrots. Um, I don't eat carrots that much. I do like carrots. I don't eat it that much. Um, and I was like, maybe I have some frozen mix or something or other? Nah, um, no big deal. So I know that carrots are nice in a sauce because it lends a certain texture and a certain um, sweetness without adding sugar, um, but I don't have that today. So I'm just going to just peeling away my uh, prosciutto from the backing and I'll just give it a really rough chop and uh, I'll chop the garlic too because like I said this cooks pretty quickly so I'm gonna put this in the garbage so I really like that um, the recipes in this book like so many other books that I've shown you um, try their best to say like this is dairy free or it could be dairy free really easily this is gluten free or it could be gluten free really easily or um, you know, this this could be um, paleo, which is basically what Whole30 is, but a little more strict. Um, so if you want to eat healthier, if you want to have some easy, fun meals, I mean, this cookbook seems pretty good. I was looking through it the other day, and uh, there were a couple of things that I wanted to try out just for myself, not even uh, on the library's Facebook because I, I, I mean most of the cookbooks that I choose for everybody I do actually really enjoy myself and that's why I choose them so all right so I'm gonna chop my garlic um, I found out this like great little hack instead of sitting here trying to peel the garlic just cut the ends off and the peel will come right off um, don't know why I didn't know that um, in all of my years of cooking for myself which has been more than you realize I don't know why I didn't realize that neat little, neat little hack there. So now the peel is coming off so easily. Good job. All right, so I'm just gonna mince this up a little bit. And do I need to put any oil in the pan? No, I mean the 
Pancetta is fatty. Um, the prosciutto has a little less fat to render in the pan than when you're like cooking the uh, pancetta, which I did. What did we use the pancetta for a while ago? Oh, Ina's, Ina's carbonara, which was delicious. I still think about that carbonara, that spring green carbonara from uh, the Barefoot Contessa newest cookbook. That was, that was a good recipe. Um, was a really good recipe actually. Um, I do keep track of the recipes that I've been using and um, some of you may have seen the bullet journal videos that we did over the summer and have gotten a bullet journal kit. Um, so I actually have a section in my bullet journal that is just for recipes that I would cook again or that I really liked. Um, I have a section for like restaurants that I love and um, and that I you know dishes that I like from particular restaurants that I would definitely go to again so I don't forget. Because, well, in regular times, every now and then you sit there with your friends and you go, where should we go? I don't even know. So I thought having a little list would be nice. Um, and also, yeah, so like I said, I also have a recipe one. So every recipe that I have cooked, uh, either for myself or for everyone on here that I've really enjoyed, I added to my list and made a photocopy or some of the cookbooks I actually bought for myself. Okay, I'm almost done with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my prosciutto in. I'm just gonna keep this on pretty low. Um, I don't want it to burn, like I said. And then I will finish chopping my garlic and add that in with the onions and the crushed red pepper flakes for a little kick. I thought this was a nice recipe for today too. You know, we're supposed to get all that snow and it's like really nice and hearty and comforting and warm and what's not comforting and warm about a pasta dish, right? Uh, as usual, I'm using my favorite grain-free pasta that I keep stocked up in my fridge. I think this is my last box though, so we'll see what I do about that. Um, usually get it when it goes on sale. It can be a little pricey, but it's really um, delicious for people who are gluten-free or grain-free. Um, it actually has the texture of regular fresh pasta, and I love it. So this is starting to sizzle up. Yeah, I know, my knife skills are really bad. Just don't pay attention to my knife skills. I haven't said it in a while, but Marie and I always say we gotta, we gotta go to a remedial chef school. Listen, I can get the job done, it's just not pretty. They'd all be yelling at me. Your knife cuts are not even. Your food is not going to cook evenly. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, it's fine, I like garlic. We can have some big chunks. Okay, um, so let's see, let me get my is starting to cook down. I do want this to get a little crisp before I add in the other ingredients, but this can continue to cook up and crisp while I'm cooking the other things. Um, mainly, you would be worrying about cooking the carrots down. It does take them a little bit of time to get soft. Um, let's see. Carrot, onion, garlic, red pepper flakes, increase the heat, cook until the vegetables are slightly tender, three to four more minutes. And then we're gonna add the lamb, salt, pepper, and we're gonna cook that with everything all together. I'm just waiting for my prosciutto to get crispy. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever, ever tried this, but I love it. It is a little salty, so you, you gotta make this like your only salt for the day. Um, drink a lot of water. But when you put prosciutto in the oven, and you can crisp it up. They're like little prosciutto crisps and they're really, really good. They are very, very salty though, but um, they're delicious. They're delicious, definitely very salty. Um, and I've had some pizza before with prosciutto too, um, and it does crisp up and it does kind of seem salty. So you just gotta drink a lot of water. Um, 
So you know, I'm gonna put the prosciutto back in the fridge. Okay. I can smell it, so I think that means now's a good time to add in my onions. Pre-chopped, frozen, you know, that's my favorite. Pepper flakes. How much am I supposed to add? Um, so of course, as you can see, I'm using this on the computer. Don't forget that a lot of books that you get on Libby or Hoopla, you can open up right into your browser, which is really nice. Quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna get spicy smelling in here, um, which is really nice uh, if you don't want to use your phone for that kind of stuff. If you're trying to preserve your battery. Um, but also it's just really convenient to take a look on your computer with the bigger screen than squint at your tiny phone all the time, right? Ooh, I can smell those red pepper flakes. Okay, I'm going to get my kitchen scissors to open up the ground lamb. Where's my salt and pepper? Salt and pepper is there. Um, this here I don't need this yet. I do have like a special pair of dedicated kitchen scissors. Um, so that way I know like if I'm using it to open a meat container or something like this, I just put it right into the sink and it gets washed. Um, it's only for food. Um, it's not like for crafting. And it also is one of those ones that has like some herb strippers right in there, which is really cool. I'm just gonna open this up carefully. right into the sink. I'm going to add my garlic. Remember you don't want your garlic to burn. Garlic does burn pretty easily. Although I do love when you have a lot of oil in your pan and you basically like pan fry your garlic and it gets a little crispy and brown. So good. All right, my onions are nice and soft. flakes. It just went like right into my nasal passage. Whoa! <laughs> and it's not that much woo, in the grand scheme of things, but uh, once you once you add in the, the lamb and the rest of everything, it'll, it'll be fine. But it is smelling pretty spicy in here right now, and I like it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add my lamb, and then I'll season this with salt and pepper after I wash my hands, of course. Come on, everybody. I'm going to switch to my wooden spoon because it uh, breaks it down a little better. I think my lamb is still a little frozen. Once I break it apart, that's when I'll add in the salt and pepper so that, may, that way I make sure it's incorporated really well into the entire mixture. First time I think that I've done a lamb preparation that's not uh, decidedly Greek. Um, which is funny because I'm not Greek. But all the times that I've had lamb, the recipes that I've used have been um, with like the, the spices and herbs that you would use if you were making a Greek dish. So a lot of mint, cinnamon, and this doesn't have that. Um, I even did ones I did, uh, slow cooker, 
lamb with red wine, which we are using today. We're going to use some red wine. Um, come on, buddy. Flip over. There we go. Ooh, nice and brown on the bottom already. Good. And then the, the lamb burger that I love so much uh, from my favorite restaurant in Glen Rock, uh, Stone and Rail, if you live near Glen Rock or will go to Glen Rock and you want a good lamb burger or a beef burger, their beef burger is really good too. Um, that is definitely more Greek of inspiration. It's got the onions, the red onions, and the feta. Very good. All right, so I'm still on low heat here, which is fine, because I still, I just want to mind the garlic and the spices. I don't want to burn anything. Obviously my fridge is very cold. I did defrost this yesterday, but um, my fridge is set to pretty cold, so we're still, we're still cooking down here. <coughs> that, that pepper keeps and the garlic keeps like wafting up into my nose. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'm just gonna let this cook. Uh, it is softening up, it's warming up, so I'm just gonna let this cook a little bit. As you can see, I have a, have a pot for my macaroni. Uh, the water is already salted, it's just not boiling yet, so we'll do that in a minute or two also, because as you know, a watched pot never boils, and we're all watching. All right, um, yeah, wow, it's like smoky and awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. <laughs> it's so funny. All right. But you know that means it's going to taste good. All right. Um, let me start to add in my salt and pepper. Get that right on over. It's nice because the lamb is releasing its juices and the fat. I'm actually going to turn this up a little bit, so that's going to prevent the garlic and the spices and the prosciutto from burning at this point, which is good. You know, we got them cooked the way we wanted them cooked, but, you know, they're now they're going to add their flavor to the lamb, but they're not going to overcook at this point because they're cooking in the juices from, and the fat from the lamb. breaking it up. Uh, that's why I like a wooden spoon here. It's nice and firm to break it up. see like the bits of garlic are in here and they're brown but not burned so I put the lamb at like the perfect time. Um, okay. okay. So I'm going to let this continue to cook. So let's see what we're going to have to do next. All right. Um, cook breaking up the meat until the lamb is brown and cooked through. Drain off any excess fat. Then we're going to stir in some red wine, bay leaves, and dried thyme. 
uh, and bring to a rapid simmer. Cook, stirring until the wine reduces and there is only a small amount of liquid left in the pot. Should only take three to five minutes. Then we're gonna add the sauce. Uh, bring it to a boil again, then reduce and continue to cook. And then you stir in the milk as the last thing. And if you want to uh, add Parmesan cheese and parsley, you can add that at the very end. So I'm gonna go ahead and boil my water now. I think we're, I think we're getting ready to be there. I mean, you should let the, the sauce with the marinara cook for a while, it says, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna accelerate that a little bit. Let's see how much wine. Do we need one cup dry red wine? So I have a Pinot Noir. And once I made um, the <clears throat> the slow cooker lamb with um, a Merlot, and I thought the Merlot Merlot was a little too fruity and sweet, so for this one I decided to try Pinot Noir. And we'll see. Lamb is getting nice and browned. We're getting the pink out. Only a little bit left, I can, from what I can see. I'm just breaking it up. So I also chose this cookbook because a couple of the cookbooks that I wanted to look at for today were already checked out. Um, and so I was like, well, where else do you go to get the books that you want when they're checked out? Of course, you can go um, onto Libby or Hoopla. All right, this is almost done. I'm gonna turn my flame down because I am gonna put some alcohol in there. Alcohol is very flammable. Okay. Um, it smells so good. I can smell the lamb now that the lamb's all cooking up. I can smell it. It's awesome. All right. Um. It was cooked over no longer paint. Drain off any excess fat. So let me get a little uh, cup that I can do that with. Welcome to my cabinet. I'll use a mug. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to my cabinet. some excess fat in here, not that much, but all right, we're definitely brown, we're ready to go. There's actually barely any fat in here, so I'm not going to drain it. I'm going to keep this nice and low. I'm going to go ahead and Add in my bay leaves. How many bay leaves? Two bay leaves and one teaspoon of dried thyme. It's a little bay leaf, that's fine. Okay. Not measuring. Meh. Okay, I'm mix that in and then add my wine. I'm still trying to break up some of those larger chunks. Okay. I'm going to slowly add in my wine. Mix that all up so that everything is coated and comes together. And we're going to let this reduce a little bit. Okay. 
And then just remember at the end we'll be taking the bay leaves out. says three to five minutes. All right, I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit because it says it needs to simmer. Okay. All right, I don't need this mug. We can go back into the cabinet. My moose mug. All right. Um, so this cookbook has um, a couple of different sections. It's got the Mambo Italiano, so things that were inspired by her mom. Um, tacos y mas, so some Mexican inspired dishes. Um, because it says she grew up in Texas, so between her Italian heritage and what she grew up surrounded by, she um, came up with the, the recipes in this cookbook. Let's see, what else? Um, better than takeout, um, Thai basil beef sounds so good. Um, red curry shrimp and sweet potato noodle stir fry is another one that I bookmarked for myself. Remember, you can add bookmarks digitally so you can keep track of what you're looking for. Some soups, Greek lemon and oregano potato soup sounds really good. good. So we're simmering now. I'm just keeping a watch on this. And then there's some Mediterranean recipes as well. Lemon Greek potatoes with crispy Greek chicken thighs. <clears throat> Mussels with saffron and fennel broth. Well, saffron is very expensive, but uh, they have it at Trader Joe's. Um, sumac roasted salmon with mint coriander yogurt sauce. Sounds amazing. And that's one of the ones that I bookmarked as well. Um, and then there's a whole curried and spice section like tandoori chicken burgers. Curried tuna cakes with lemony asparagus. Some southern recipes, Cajun crab cakes. Uh, Cajun sheet pan shrimp boil. A paleo chili pie, that sounds good. And then there's also some if you have kids because this is like a weeknight busy person cookbook. A lot of the times those busy people who need to cook on a weeknight are parents. So there are some really clean but popular kid friendly recipes like hamburger helper but it's um, healthier grain-free pizza bites, the best grain-free chicken nuggets, and sour cream chicken taquitos. Oh, I think there was a chicken taquito recipe in here that I saw that I wanted to um, try. Oh, chipotle chicken tostadas, enchiladas con carne, oh, chorizo con papas taquitos. That sounds so good. Let's go back to my recipe. So I just go to bookmarks. There's a little side tab when you click on the screen um, and you can bring up all of your bookmarks. One reduces, there's only a small amount of liquid, three to five minutes, add the sauce. Three and a half cups. I'm gonna measure that out next. We're reducing, we're cooking. Pasta water's not boiling yet. isn't it? It's probably the whole jar. Okay. <laughs> Give this a stir. Smells really good. I love the, the smell of the lamb, which is like a little gamey, um, mixing with the red wine. It smells great. didn't reduce that much but I'm going to go ahead and add the sauce because it's going to continue to reduce so I'm gonna go ahead and add the sauce now so everything can just kind of reduce together and this is my favorite clean no sugar sauce no sugar no additives no soy it's literally just tomatoes and 
basil, avocado oil, onions, garlic, oregano. Really clean. Just my kind of thing. All right, I'm going to stir this up so everything is combined. I'm going to put the heat up a little bit because we want to get this going. Oh, it smells so good. Oh my goodness, it smells amazing. This definitely just have some basil in it. I don't know if the recipe would approve of that, but I know that I love the way this sauce tastes, so I'm happy about that. Okay, so I'm gonna put the heat up a little bit. Bubbling. Okay, it's bubbling. Not the pasta water though. Like I said, a watch pot never boils. Oh, it smells so good. I'm trying to keep track of those bay leaves. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to leave them in there. Well, if you find it in your in your bowl, it's like a prize. This is the pasta because the pasta water is almost ready. This pasta will definitely be ready before this is, um, but I'll probably continue to cook this off camera, but you'll get the idea. Um, this pasta comes frozen. It's just made with almond flour, eggs, tapioca flour, a thickener, and salt. And it is frozen while it's still fresh, so that's why it has such a really, really good texture. Um, really soft, like a fresh pasta. So this is coming to a boil so I can turn it down to simmer nice and low. So what needs to happen next that we'll see how far we get here on camera is um, once the sauce has thickened, uh, after simmering it for 15 to 20 minutes, um, you take out the bay leaves and you stir in the milk. I'm using hemp milk because I like the texture of it um, and the flavor. It's a pretty neutral flavor. Um, coconut milk is also similarly thick but I didn't want the flavor of coconut milk. Um, even like the coconut milk in the carton, I didn't want that flavor to kind of impart on here, so this is a little more neutral. Um, things like almond milk and cashew milk are a little too nutty for me. Um, so we're adding in half a cup, I'll do a little bit less. It says you can omit it entirely, but I think it's just like a nice texture that it adds. So, but that's at the end anyway, so I'm gonna do a little less than half a cup. this back in the fridge. We're almost boiling. We're just about boiling. Give this a stir. Oh boy, this is good. And of course, you know, a jarred sauce is never as good as mom's sauce or grandma's sauce or your own sauce if you're the, you're the chef in the house. Um, 
but when you let it cook like this with all of the meat and the spices, hello, in here, um, it kind of makes it taste, taste less from a jar and more homemade. All right, so my water is boiling. This is gonna go really quickly because it's just fresh. Um, it should only take like 90 seconds. And like a real fresh pasta, this particular pasta absorbs the, the flavor and the sauces really, really nicely. Uh, another one of the reasons why I like it, they also make gnocchi. If you've seen me make lasagna um, many moons ago, it was the same. Uh, lasagna that lasagna noodles. They also make uh, pizza. I know I have a little battery. Sorry, we're almost done here. Okay. This smells so good, and it is starting to reduce down a little bit already, which is nice. like let it go another second or two because I'm always thinking to myself it can't possibly be done already but it's fresh it's fresh it just needs to have to chill out and uh, become pliable again and warmed up just let it go another second so it smells really good in here right now <laughs> and I'm really excited about that need to torch you anymore. You're done. Okay. I'm gonna get my pot holders. And drain this. Got my pasta in there. I'm gonna add my milk now, just so you can see. It just adds like a little creaminess and just helps finish off the flavor profile. Oh, I gotta take. Well, I'll leave the bay leaves in because this is still gonna go for a little bit. A little bowl just so y'all can see but I'm going to myself let this continue to cook for another 10 minutes but I'm gonna give it a little bowl now just to taste All right, just a little bit of pasta sauce and this way also I can give it a little taste for seasoning and see if I need to add any more salt and pepper definitely still needs to thicken up a little bit but we are on the way so there there's that's what it looks like um, if you, like I said, if you would like at this point, if you have fresh parsley, you can sprinkle some fresh parsley on top. If you like to eat dairy, if you can eat dairy, you can sprinkle some Parmesan right on top and it smells delicious. All right, I'm going to give it a little, little taste. That's good. It does need a little salt and pepper. No, not pepper, just salt. Um, it definitely does need to cook down a little bit more, 
need to make those uh, tomatoes and the wine marry just a little bit more together, but the flavor is already imparted into the meat. There's the there's the red pepper flakes right in the back of that. You know when something is not overtly spicy, but all of a sudden it'll hit you right in the back of your palate. We're like, whoo, whoo, there we go. It is yummy. It's delicious. I'm very, I'm, yes, I am enjoying this. <laughs> um, this is good. But it does need to cook down a little bit more just so that the flavors can come together a little bit. This is really good. This is very good. Um, oh, I wanted to show you what was the other recipe that I was going to try. Another reason why I'm glad that I try to keep um, pancetta on hand. Where is it? Ooh, maybe it wasn't in this one. No, it is. It's right here. The chicken salt and boca roll-ups. So it's just chicken breast, which I have, um, yeah, creeper spices. They're creeping up. Um, <laughs> uh, which I tend to have so much. I keep a lot of plain chicken breast frozen in my freezer because they're easy to cook and they keep really well in the freezer. Um, they've been the savior of stay at home and quarantine and all of that. Um, but this is basically you kind of slice it and then you stuff it with um, aspar like asparagus and like a Dijon mustard and you wrap it up in sage and prosciutto and you let it cook and it sounds absolutely amazing and I bookmarked that as well. This whole cookbook just sounds really good. Um, so I'm really glad that I decided to look for one on Libby instead of going one that I like wasn't super happy about. Um, I'm just gonna give it a stir every now and then just to make sure not, no, no part of the pot is feeling unloved. But it does need to reduce a little bit. Um, yeah, so again, this is the defined dish. It is available on Libby. Um, I don't know how many copies there are, so I know I have a copy right now, but it's really good. You could also probably find it on Buckles. Let's see how many libraries have it. Let's take a look. Thirty-four libraries have it. Twenty-three have it right now. So if you want it and it's not available on Libby because I have it, um, you can go ahead and request it for curbside pickup um, at any of the twenty-three libraries that currently have it right now. It is absolutely delicious. I really have enjoyed looking through this cookbook. And I'm going to let this simmer a little bit longer until it is nice and thick, and I'm going to enjoy my lunch. Gosh, it's really good. It's really good. And good call self on the Pinot Noir instead of the Merlot because it's just got like a little dark smoke, uh, more intense flavor rather than the Merlot that I used last time. Like I said, it was a little too sweet and fruity. It's very good. Excuse me, I have sauce on my face now. <laughs> All right, so this is actually the last book cooks of 2020. Um, we will come back for the new year, new cookbooks, new recipes. Hopefully uh, some more people will get involved. Um, I'm trying to, I know I have like one new cookbook that's coming in next week that I already know we're doing with some recipes from. So I'm really excited about that. I keep trying to order new ones so that we can constantly share the new recipes for you because it's fun. And of course, like I said, there are always cookbooks that maybe you don't have at your particular library or you don't want to wait for that are available on Libby and Hoopla. Hoopla has tons right now. If you go on there and you look, there's a whole section for holiday cooking. So you may find something perfect for um, whether you're celebrating a holiday or you just want to have some special dishes. If you're not celebrating a holiday, there's so much on there on Hoopla right now. So make sure you check that out. All right, that is it for me for today. I'm gonna to continue to let this simmer, let my kitchen smell amazing, and I'm gonna have my lunch. And I will see you all for some more cooking in the new year. All right, everyone, bye.